Welcome to another Vintage Fishing Reel Service video. In this episode we have a Zebco One Classic Feather Touch with cast control. And uh, I ended up getting this one today at a local flea market for $5. Believe it or not, that's a pretty good deal, assuming nothing's broken. Uh, it's obviously farm fresh, dirty, uh, pretty pretty tight, pretty grease bound, but, uh, and of course a little bit more complicated than some of the other Zebcos, and I'm, I think I've done one of these before, but I, I don't remember anything about doing it, so it's sort of like discovering it again for the first time, so, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So removing the cover is just a partial uh, counterclockwise twist and the slides off uh, you can see the uh, line stop here you know pretty crusty in there but the line stops intact and still somewhat soft so that's good news to get the spinner head off hold on to the handle make a counterclockwise turn of the spinner head and that comes off you can see the uh, in this case there's no cuts on the spinner head and doesn't appear to be any cuts in the line line pickup pin that I can see or feel so that's good put that in the parts tray then remove the e-clip to get the spool off and Make sure our drag uh, is off and uh, try to get this spool off of here. Take off our drag washers first. We've got a Teflon and a keyed metal. Uh, I may try to, yeah, somebody was bobber fishing with this last time. I see a little bobber stop in there for a slip bobber. Um, I may take off this line and very carefully try to heat the, uh, spindle in that spool and see if I can, eh, it might even be better to soak it in hot water. I think that'd be safer. So I'm going to get this line off of here. And then I'm going to go over to the sink and put this, at least this, into the reel, uh, where the spool is, into some scalding hot water. And try to heat up the grease that's keeping this uh, spool from coming off. Okay, so I put this thing in scalding hot water. And then tried to get some PB blaster down in there through the grooves in there and that would not spin or budge and but I, I i won't say that it didn't do any good but i thought well let's see if we can get the metal to contract a little bit by taking a bowl of ice water and dipping it in there right after i had heated it up and at that point i've got it spinning i can spin it it's it's a little higher up than it was but i can spin and i'm trying to spin and pull out on it at the same time and there it come there it come so that was uh a bit interesting trying to get that thing off of there so there's your other and these are still nice well they're probably lubricated now with all that pb blaster but there's your other teflon drag washer and keyed metal washer 
So now that thing is finally off of there. Get this out of the way. So just be patient because this is not metal and so you could crack this this shaft around which the spool goes. So in this case scalding hot water, some PV blaster followed by some freezing cold water was enough to allow me to get that to spin and winkle that thing off of there. And this is this here is nylon or Nalgene or something. Uh, this here is associated with this uh, uh, power uh, thing here. What is it called? It's the uh, power lever. So I imagine that has something to do with the drag on the on the spool. That's. And then this, of course, is the actual drag here that's operated with the, uh, that's operated with the, uh, star drag adjuster here. So at any rate, uh, let's start taking off the, uh, handle here, which is going to begin with removing this screw here. And let's see, I think, I think we may have to take apart some things on the inside before we can get that star drag adjuster off of there. And this might be fun too, in terms of trying to get this back cover off of there. Trying to do it without breaking the handle, or the button. Sometimes I try to use that button for leverage and someday it's gonna I'm gonna be sorry. Uh, I don't want to put too much pressure on that. Uh, I might go out and try my uh, oil filter strap on that and see if I can get that to come off. Okay, that seems to have worked. I've got it turned a little bit. I'm gonna try. I got yeah. I got it turned. I think I've got it turned enough. I may just see if I can start to pry it. Here it comes. I got it at least turned to where it can be popped off here. But those get sand and grease and stuff in there, and you can just you can just feel the grit, and that binds those up on there and can make them tough to get off. All right, I'm just trying. Looks like let's see here. Looks like I can pull out the pinion gear and shaft. And that has a little, uh, looks like it's associated with the bait clicker part on there. And so that can go on the parts tray. And then it looks like to get this assembly off, we have a an E-clip right here. So, uh... We take that off. I'm going to shoot this across the room if I'm not careful. Make sure I'm, I've got the center on that thing. And there it goes. So now off to look for the E-clip. Well, I got lucky that didn't take too long. About five minutes of searching. Found it right below my work desk on the carpet. So there's the E-clip for that. And, of course, this pressure plate came out uh, when I turned this over. I wanted to make sure 
you saw that pressure plate in there but at any rate uh, let's see can we back this can we back this star drag out of there now what's going on here there it comes and you can see this star drag adjuster is as one of the uh, tines or whatever you want to call them broken off and that's pretty typical of these. I mean, that's a really bad flaw. They should have, they were trying to save money and ended up making a faulty part because those are typically broken off. They should have made that out of metal. But uh, it is what it is. And so now, can we winkle this main gear out of here without having to remove the bait clicker thing here. It doesn't look like we're going to be able to easily winkle that thing out of there without removing the bait clicker. It does not appear to be a a rivet. So the, and I, you hate to do this too much if it's not a rivet because then you start wearing it out, wearing out the hole. Uh, and then it doesn't want to stick in there like it's supposed to. Let's just see if we can punch this pin out. Okay, so that, that pin came out, which should allow us to remove the bait clicker. So that goes on kind of like that. Uh, you don't have to take out the bait clicker adjustment knob. And now we should be able to get the main gear to winkle out of there. And uh, the mechanism that runs the, uh, the drag and, and into which the star drag adjuster screws in. So lots of old nasty grease on there. Let's take a look at the pinion gear and just okay I can see what well, looks like significant wear but nothing that's going to compromise the functioning of the reel and here you've got your anti-reverse pawl and I don't know that that really needs to come out, although I would like to kind of get down in there and clean. Yeah, I just, I definitely don't want a monkey with taking this out. And I don't, I think I can clean down there with penetrant and hot water and maybe not mess with taking that, that anti-reverse Paul out of there. I think I can leave that in and, and not be a problem. I think I can clean that out pretty good without removing it. Uh, is that a bearing in there? A roller bearing or ball bearing? Looks like there's a ball bearing in there. So that's, that's a good thing. I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to press that out. I think I'm just going to clean and lubricate that good. So that pretty much is the teardown procedure on the Zebco One Classic. And so I'm off to the sink with hot water and Dawn dish soap and WD-40 uh, and a toothbrush. And I'll be back just like that. So these things... These reels were made between 1987 and 1991. And so, and depending on the fisherman, you know, when I was a kid, I don't think I ever serviced my reels. I, I'd use them until they didn't work like they should anymore. And just, I don't know if I just assumed that they were gone bad or whatever, but I rarely 
serviced the reels and I suspect there's a lot of people out there that don't and never do and so it's quite possible that the grease and stuff on here is factory and it has not been serviced since it was new sometime between 1987 and 1991 it would not surprise me in the least and so uh, you can take these old things that appear, that it, appear not to be working and clean them and service them and have them working like new again okay so let's start by uh, taking some steel wool around these shafts and just getting off any residual grease and shining those up and anywhere else that might need a little buffing and uh, start putting our now the question is I don't think that it matters which way that you know whether it goes in like that or like that uh, I don't think that matters let's just double check here yeah, I don't really think that matters which side faces which direction there, but we can uh, we can probably go ahead and oil this first. Uh, and put... Okay, and then I'm going to just sneak a little oil down here. Okay, and now we should be able to set our bait clicker back in there and the pin that holds it in place And we can get some grease on the main gear. Uh, I'll monkey with that later. And then uh, some grease on our pinion gear and some oil on the pinion gear shaft oh by the way I know I, I think I did something I did something uh, I made a no-no here so you have to make sure that this little anti-reverse lever here right there that's got to be slid around and fit in the little notch on that anti-reverse paw so that's got to be in place and you can kind of test that uh, before you get everything back together so that that's one th thing I sometimes forget till I find out later and then you have to take it all apart Should be in there. Uh, 
Not sure that it's looked like it was in there, but it's not kicking that pawl down on the cogs there. There, now it's working. Okay, now we can s slide our anti or our uh, bait clicker and our pinion gear and so on in there. I'm going to go ahead and put this handle on so I can test things better here. And I'm going to have to, when I'm all done, I'm going to take that nut off of there again and go out to the uh, wire wheel and shine that rusty thing up. Okay, I guess that's right. I've got this. There's a little post on this bait clicker. And then on this actuator, whatever you want to call it, that's attached to the uh, to the uh, pinion gear shaft, there's a little notch. And I think that post goes in that notch. Uh, I'm not sure how durable that whole thing is, but maybe when I get it all buttoned together, it'll... It'll uh, be a little bit more uh, functional. Right now it just seems like, you know, that that thing pops up off that post. But we'll see what happens when I get it all together, if it, if it actually works. Uh, so I think, oh, we got to put in our E-clip to keep that thing from wobbling around. Okay, and at that point, I think we're ready to put the rear cap back on. So that you just find your little punch out there, put it in the, well, we should probably put a little grease on the end of that button. And so find your little punch out, find your little notch, press it down, and then turn it all the way until it stops. Turn it clockwise till it stops. Still not quite sure exactly how that drag works should be putting pressure up on this pressure oh okay here we go okay I think I see now I think so that little tab fits over over that and as you pull as this as this so if you go like if you pull if you turn it like this if you turn you're turning the drag on and what that's doing is it's causing this angled tab here to ride up on that so as you pull back on that as you uh increase the drag and that this thing here starts moving back it's causing this to ride up like that and push put pressure against the pressure plate. If you have this all the way backed off, that pressure plate will, will lie more or less flat on there. Okay, so uh, it's not perfectly flat, but I guess it's as flat as it needs to be. I'm going to just put bend this up a little bit, this little uh, drag clicker, just in case that sprung a little bit. I'm going to test this without any grease and that's still fitting on there really tightly so I don't know what goes on uh, whether 
this stuff expands over time or what but that that should move freely on there and if I try to force that down I think if, even if I had grease on there uh, it's not going to move freely even on the lowest drag setting so one thing I've done I'd rather than maybe rather than just to, to try to sand this I've taken a, a Dremel tool with, uh, with a uh, sanding barrel or disc or whatever you want to call it on there and just lightly reamed that spool out a little bit and uh, that has worked in the past so I'm going to try that on this one now there might be somebody out there screaming no don't do that that's not what you do uh, so do this at your own risk but this has worked for me in the past and so there might be a better way but I don't know what it is so this is my reel and this is what I'm going to how I'm going to try to solve it. Okay, so I've reamed that out a little bit, and now it fits on there nice. It turns nicely with no drag, and here the bait clicker, and it pulls off relatively easily. So, like I said, I don't know if this stuff swells over time or what, but this is the second reel. What was the one I just did? Seems like I just did one where I had the same issue where it wasn't, even at no drag, it just wasn't spinning on there well. And this is what I do to solve it. It's a lot easier to get an even ream on that metal with that Dremel tool than it is to try to sand this down evenly around there. But that's my fix. Do it at your own risk. Uh, not saying it's the right way or the best way, but it works for me. Okay, so now we're ready for one of our keyed metal washers. And those three sort of ears on the inside there fit down on those slots. And then we've got a Teflon washer. And then we've got our spool, which we should probably just get a light, light coat of of grease on there we don't want to dumb it up too much and then we've got our another Teflon washer and then again this has got to be pushed down far enough so that the little ears on that washer line up with the uh, the slits on the margins of that post upon which the spool rides. And then we can sneak our E clip on there and grease, or I'm sorry, oil the pivot point and sort of the base where the uh, pickup pin right and screw that back on we also need to lubricate and clean out the knobs on the handle so I'm going to run some oil in there and work that around and let it come out the other side 
I don't have my white paper towel with me to show you, but this oil goes in clear, but when it comes out the other side, it's black from all of the gunk that's been washed out by the oil. So I'll oftentimes do that a couple times, washing it out and lubricating at the same time. I'll have to look, because quite honestly, I don't know what this lock preset thing is here. I assume it has something to do with the drag, but I don't know. I'll have to look that up. Uh, I just don't know. So the power level, this power lever, allowed you to, based on what I read, to increase your hook setting power uh, by up to three pounds and also allowed you to sort of preset your drag. I'll have to play with it once I get some line on here and kind of see how it performs and what all it does, but that's basically what it is. It has to do with presetting the drag or adding more power to the hook set. And of course you have easy access for for manipulating the thing. And I'm assuming this little thin flange here uh, is is basically the quote-unquote feather touch feature that allows you to kind of break that cast ever so slightly uh, in in the in the middle or into the cast. And. One thing I'm going to do before I completely finish this project is take this nut, this old rusty nut off, and take that out to the wire wheel. And hopefully I don't shoot that across the workshop. There, now that's a handle nut worthy of this newly cleaned up and serviced reel. And I didn't even shoot it across the workshop. Alright, and for some reason this or these in general, I assume it's not an aberrant individual, but there's no drain hole on the bottom. So, uh, and, you know, so basically the correct way to put on the cover is with the, where it says power lever, the instructions for this power lever will end up facing up, uh, you know, above that power lever. These were originally spooled from the factory with 14 pound test so 110 yards of 14 pound test so it's kind of a for heavier fishing pulling big bass out of weedy or stumpy areas or catfish stuff like that okay so i've got some line on here and i've got the drag set really low and you can see and here, that's working really good. Uh, I mean, it's on its lowest setting, but there's no way that I would have had that kind of uh, drag uh, before I reamed out that uh, spool. Uh, I, I, just, I just wonder if that Lexan or whatever on the shaft that the spool goes on swells or something over time. But, uh, and of course, if I tighten that drag up, it's much tighter now and still still the spool is turning nice and smoothly so i don't know how else you'd fix it other than either sanding down the shaft upon which the spool goes or reaming out the spool and i just think it's easier to get a uniform um, removal of material on the spool rather than trying to do that around the on the lexan around that shaft 
So uh, that concludes the cleaning and servicing of this Zebco One Classic that dates between 1987 and 1991. And that bait clicker uh, is now working. And let's see the anti reverse. Let's turn this off. Anti reverse is also working. And you can see that the functionality is much, much better than it was when I started. So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.